Today is the 18th Sunday of the year. Our Gospel text is Matthew chapter 14, verses 13 through 21. We find Jesus in the midst of some really bad news. He's heard that John the Baptist has been executed. He wants to seek out a lonely place. It is, in fact, subsequently where he will feed the 5,000. I'd like to reflect on place, what it means to be in place, what relationship we have with place, and what contribution it may or may not make to our lives. What can it mean? If somebody says to you, or your view of the world is utopian, they're saying that your view of the world is disconnected from reality. The Greek word utop the Greek words that form the basis of our English word utopia are utopos. It literally means no place. So a utopia is something that can't represent human existence because human existence must be in place. To be human is to be in place. Now, before I go further, I'd like to say that one of the obvious things in my own reflections on place is that it's more than just a geographical or a physical reality. We even, in our common language, talk about responses, well, I don't want to go to that place. Let's not go there. It's a psychological reality. More profoundly, it's a spiritual reality. But the entry point for the psychological and the spiritual is the physical, is the concrete world around us. So that place can mean geographical place. But let's not forget that it is the opening to more deep and rich and profound realities. It doesn't stop with the physical. The Spanish philosopher Miguel de Unamuno, who died in 1936, wrote in a book the tragic sense of men and nations. And he makes an observation there about his peers at the beginning of the 20th century. With reference to Don Quixote, the ultimate utopian. De Unamuno writes, Don Quixote has not arrived at the age of tedium vitae. Tedium vitae is the Latin expression for the boredom of life when you start to wonder, is it all worthwhile? Commonly associated with midlife crisis. Which is commonly manifested among not a few modern spirits in the form of topophobia. From the Greek words topos, phobia, fear of place. These people spend their lives running at top speed from one place to another, not from any love of the place to which they are going, but from odium of the place they are leaving behind, thus fleeing all places, which is one of the forms of despair. The Inamuno's reflection there calls to mind the observations of St. Benedict in the 6th century when he was developing his rule. He said, there's a peculiar kind of person you need to be aware of when you're building a community. That is the gyrobabe, the wanderer, the person who can't settle down, the, can't, the person who cannot be in place. They may be utopian, they may just be pathological. <laughs> But place is important to developing a rich spirituality. How can you ever know the wisdom? How can you ever experience the joy and the light of Psalm 46, verse 10? Be still and know that I am God. How can you know that if you're on the move all the time, in flight? There's a very interesting scene at the beginning of John's Gospel. Two of John the Baptist's disciples are standing there with him when Jesus comes along. John the Baptist says, look, there is the Lamb of God. The two disciples leave John the Baptist and go after Jesus. He turns around and says, what do you want? 
And they say, in effect, where is your place? Where do you stay? And this begins to open up the more than geographical or the more than domestic notions of place. They will discover over the next three years that place for Jesus is the kingdom of God. So Luke says the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head, no place. Insofar as there is place, geographical place, deserted place, such as we find in today's gospel, it's an entry point to place as a deeper psychological and more importantly a deeper spiritual reality. And so today's gospel text Chapter 14, verses 13 through 21 of John's of Matthew's Gospel. Jesus seeks out a deserted place. This is reminiscent of the Exodus. Jesus is seeking the heart of the covenant, where the people were led into a lonely place, the desert, the wilderness, to get to know God, to leave Egypt, the place of bondage, so that they may enter the kingdom of freedom of God of children. Place in the life and teachings of Jesus is a very rich concept, much richer than anything that we would allow. In the history of this continent, the Aborigines had a deeply wonderful, complex, understanding of place. Geographical, yes, land, earth, but much, much more than that. A profound psychological and spiritual reality, which we will never understand. The great tensions that were produced when the white settlers came here over terra nullius get to the heart of place and our attitude to it. For the Westerner, for the cultures that came here and clashed with the Aboriginal cultures. A lot of it was about place. Our understanding of place is that it's something to possess and own. I would suggest that has something to do with wanting to be in control. And wanting to be in control has something to do with anxiety. I'd invite you to think about that. It's a complex, not a simple matter. What is your experience of place? Have you ever thought about place? Is it problematic for you? Are you able to sit and be still? Are you on the run like Miguel de Nimo's people, fleeing from place to place? And that may not be a geographical fleeing, it may be a psychological fleeing into noise, into busyness. I leave you with the question God had for Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. When he came looking, he couldn't find them. God's question to them, to you and me, is where are you? 